have with us in the studios uh, Mohamed Jibrin Barde, who is the Deputy Director of Field Operations, Presidential Campaign Council of the APC. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Thank you very much, Mubi. And we also have Frank Schreibu, who's spokesperson, Presidential Campaign Council of the People's Democratic Party. You're welcome to Sunrise Daily. Mubi, how do you do? How do you do? Just wondering a little, though, how many spokespersons are there for the PDP presidential campaign? Unfortunately, you addressed me with the wrong uh, title. What's your title? I am a special advisor to the presidential candidates on public communication. Which is spokesperson, right? No, to the presidential candidate. My role is different. I see. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's just get started, though, um, on some of the things that have happened in recent times. Um, we've seen the campaign now going to, I mean, the different campaigns going to different states. Yesterday, your candidate was in Kwara State and also was in Ogun State. That's right. And t unfortunately, some of the events that happened in Ogun State were not very palatable, were they? Yeah, absolutely. Um, generally, uh, what we need to focus on is exactly what, are, what, what the issues are. Exactly, what are we facing as a country? Um, well, Isharite can come and go, but the fundamentals haven't changed. Um, we came to power, or this administration came to power on the basis of three things, insecurity, uh, fighting insecurity, fighting corruption, and creating jobs for, 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 for the generality of the people. Uh, majority of Nigerians felt that the system has been rigged against them mm -hmm. for quite some time mm -hmm. by, by a minority few uh, that has held this country hostage for quite a long period of time. And the most important thing that we must focus on is ensuring that um, we hold people accountable for what they have uh, put this country through. Um, I, I come from the northeastern part of Nigeria, mm. and I know how difficult it is for us to move around. I know that we're living under an extreme insecurity, insecurity situation. I, I live basically in, also in Abuja. I know what has happened in, the count, in, in Abuja regarding the bombings that have taken place. I, and I'm how sorry, sir. Let me, let me tell you specifically what I'm referring to. I'm yeah. talking about what happened in Ogun State yesterday. Right. Would you say that what happened there shows that your party is united enough to move to victory uh, come, uh, you know, come February 16? We're in, united. Absolutely, there is no doubt about that, Mobe, that we are united. Mm -hmm. The most important thing is that have the majority of Nigerians decided, and I can tell you for sure, that the election is over. Majority mm -hmm. of Nigerians have decided who they want to vote for, mm -hmm. and that we know that certainly uh, the choice is very clear. It's voting against a coalition of devils as, and as against an individual who has a high level of integrity. Majority of Nigerians who are the masses of this country have already decided, mm -hmm. irrespective of what you think of or what, or what you've seen yesterday you, happening. You, you don't, in you don't think that that could also have affected even the voters in the state? So, mm -hmm. for instance, you know, the... Okay, I'm trying to remember the name of the party, and I think it's the A A A M P. So yeah. A P M, beg your pardon. A P M and A A P C yeah. are trying to, you know, say that President Muhammad Buhari is their candidate. Yeah. However, you know, in lifting up one hand yeah. against another, <laughs> right. even though he said vote for whoever it is you want to vote for, right. don't you think that that could have annoyed some people and they say no, we're not going to vote for? No, the Muhammad Buhari, Muhammad Buhari phenomenon Buhari. is very clear. Character is something that you cannot buy in the market. Mm. Uh, integrity is something that you don't get it on the street, and that um, there is no way. Uh, you can find an individual who has that uprightness today in this country that really wants to take us away from people who have destroyed our economy for quite a long period of time mm -hmm. that um, people will choose against that person who has that level of integrity. Mm -hmm. So clearly, in this election, the choice is between character and other people who... Why do you do think the president is reluctant to help make peace and reconcile? No, he is not reluctant. The president is a very um, uh, cautious man. Uh, he's, uh, he gives people opportunity, everybody to come. He believes in the character of people, and that is why he said that people of high integrity and character should be voted into power. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly what he has said across uh, many, uh, at many forums and across many events. Mm -hmm. Mr. Schreiber, let's talk about what happened you know, in Ogun State. It seemed that your candidate was, I beg your pardon, in uh, River candidate. State. Yeah. Yeah. He seemed to, according to our correspondent, was the most passionate speech, the most direct one he's made. Uh, it was emotional now to the uh, to, to President Mohamed Bar Usually he will focus on what he wants to do for the people, but yesterday he took a swipe at the presidential candidate of the All <coughs> Progressive Congress. What, is it changing tactic? No, 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 Mark, but he's not changing tactics. The question is, at Port Accord yesterday, the position of my presidential candidates, and by the grace of God, the next president of Nigeria, changed because it bordered 
on the comments, the recent comments, and the degenerating level of the outburst of Mr. President is becoming very alarming and fearful. He was, in, he was referring to his comments in, in Zamfara, in one of the states where Mr. President told them that, look, all we need you to do is to pray for rain so that you can have food in house language. And when there is food, you will have energy to fight. And that is, and that is, that, that, that is condemnable. And if you had to look the lives of the do you, people... Do you think his statement was taken out of context? Just oh, ask him now. See, I, I don't Mark, not speak Hausa. I believe that he would have addressed the people, I mean, in Hausa language. But do you think it was taken out of context? Mark, because where, sometimes there are things that people say in, in languages and doesn't quite mean the same thing in English language. Mark, where, Mark where you and I know that, at least we have followed the trend, and the people of Nigeria are aware that this president has been very incoherent since the beginning of this campaign. And so you cannot say that he's taking it out of context. He was in, in Wari, for instance, he handed over the flag of his party, told the governorship candidate of the party, and called him the presidential candidate of the party. So you don't say that he was taken out of context. He said it. He made those comments. He spoke in the house language. He didn't speak the English language. If he had battled with the English language, he would have said, oh, maybe because of his deficiencies in the use of the English language. In this circumstance, no, no. he didn't. But, he, he, see, he spoke the house language. But, he was Sir, clear. Let me he was on what I mean by context. Yes. yes. I mean, in Worry, for instance, yes. he, the mistake he made there raised certain questions. Mm. But here, you're talking about another, you know, uh, in, uh, something different. You said he spoke to the people in house language. We do know that violence has been you know, prevalent in Zamfara. The people of Zamfara have suffered quite a bit from people they call marauders and invaders who come in to kill them in their tens and in their hundreds. Very well. So perhaps, I'm just, I'm just trying to say, perhaps there was something he was referring to concerning the context of the security situation of Zamfara State. N not, you don't think that had anything to do with Mark, it? Well, not at all. You know, when my good friend here was talking, he said their government, when they came into power in 2015, was hinged on three cardinal things, corruption, economy, and security. At the time they came to power, yes, we had crisis, security crisis in the Northeast. Today, under their leadership, it has spread to the North Central, to the Northwest, snowballing to almost all parts of the country. We are all witnesses to this, and we are all, we are, we are all uh, students of history. Practically, Mr. President addressed the people of Zampara. He spoke in clear, unadulterated house language. When well, you are talking of contextual conditioning, it becomes... It, it becomes wrong here because there is no context there. He told them clearly. He said, look, Nigeria, um, um, we need rain to fall. Let us all pray for, to God Almighty to give us rain so that there will be plenty of food. And when you have plenty of food, you have energy to fight. And for me, for me, you don't need the services of a clairvoyant mm -hmm. to understand what this man is talking about. Mm -hmm. you, don't need the, you don't need the services of an interpreter to understand what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. You're talking of the mass of our people, uh, um, a majority of whom are completely... We have lost uh, the family members, relations, and, and instead of empathizing and sympathizing with them and, pro and, and promising them that, look, you're going to provide what we call adequate security, you know, to contain the level of insurgency in their zones, you, keep, you, keep, you are telling them and urging them on to say, look, uh, let, let's pray to God to give you food so that when you have food, I think their problem is about food. Mm -hmm. The same food you have not been able to put on the table for the common people. Mm -hmm. The same food you have taken away from the people. You stole their food. You stole their security. You stole their employment. Unemployment has risen to about 21, uh, about over 20, 21 million Nigerian young people have lost their jobs under this administration. And you look at the people in the face and say, look, I pray to God to give you rain. What it means is this. You know, I think he's reacting. He wanted to say something. He's reacting because we have been complaining that this president is on a valedictory session. He has been going around from state to state without something tangible to Mr. say. Mr. Now, for once, he decided to say something tangible. And he, he made a goof by telling the people to say, okay, well, let's pray for food, for, for rent to fall so that you have food. And when you have food, you have power to fight. Come on, who says, who does this that?